Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Harry Wolf and we play with JavaScript and all things front end around these parts. Today's episode is one that I've been planning for a couple of weeks now. I've talked to about it with friends, family, and loved ones like you all. And today's topic is about Dino or Deno. I'm not sure if there's an actual right pronunciation out there in the world yet, but uh, I'm gonna use Dino for now because it reminds me of a dinosaur and that is the logo of it. Uh, Dino, do you know what Dino is? Deno, Dino, do you know what it is? Uh, it's a pretty exciting project, one that I guess was first announced last year. Um, I have some quick facts for you about Dino. Fact number one, uh, just to answer what the heck is Dino, uh, according to their website, Dino is a secure runtime for JavaScript and TypeScript. And by that, what they mean, so it might help also to explain who made Dino. And it was a fellow, a little chap, by the name of Ryan Dahl, who you may have heard his name before because he also created uh, Node.js, the little language that has uh, quickly allowed JavaScript to take over both the front end and back end stacks of the land. Uh, Ryan Dahl last year at a conference had this very long uh, conference talk, wonderful talk, about some of the mistakes and regrets he has now realized when he first made Node. And Dino, in many ways, is him taking all of his learnings and failures and things that he wished he had done differently with Node and applied it to Dino. So it's kind of Node V2 in some ways. Uh, it's built on V8, just like Node, uh, and then Rust, not like Node. Uh, the backing wrapper world is built in Rust. The original implementation, the prototype was written in Go, but you know, if you wanna really squeeze out all that performance, then Rust is your chap of choice. And it's also built on Tokyo, which is kind of like libuv, which is like the runtime loop implementation details. Who cares? So as I said before, Dino is a secure runtime for JavaScript and TypeScript. And what does that mean for you? It means that uh, out of the box, Dino supports TypeScript. So if you are a TypeScript fan, which I sadly am, should I be sad about being a TypeScript fan? I feel a little sad about it, but I'm also okay with it kind of a Stockholm Syndrome where I'm sad but also happy with my captor. Uh, in any case, Dino, out of the box, supports TypeScript. It has that as a first uh, party concern. So after you install Dino, you can just get up and running with TypeScript. So to show you what I mean, uh, let's actually make a new file here. We're going to make a new file called index.ts. And we're going to have it be a greeting function because I am the most unoriginal coder alive. Take a name prop. Take a string, which is a string, this is TypeScript. I'm just gonna console log, uh, we're gonna say hello name. If I could type, I'd turn back time. So now I can say greeting, and of course if I put in a number, I'm gonna have TypeScript yell at me. This is the in this is visual code yelling at me, not Dino yet. Um, but if I actually were to open up Dino here, uh, I would do Dino index.ts, and here we have Dino, by way of TypeScript, yelling at me for being a schlub and actually not putting in the right parameter. So instead I can put in my name here, save that, run that, and here we have Hello Harry. So Dino supports TypeScript out of the box. What that also means is that it uses ES modules and does not re support require. require. Uh, Require and CommonJS was kind of born out of necessity. There was no module system in JavaScript when Node was built. So by virtue of their, like you had to figure out how to break apart files into multiple modules. So how, that was the answer back then, but now we actually have the original, the official ES module spec for JavaScript itself, and that's what Dino supports. So here I'm gonna make a new little file. I'm gonna call this config.ts. Gonna export uh, a name. Again, I am the most cleverest coder imaginable. Save that, go back to index.ts, and now I can go up here and uh, import my name from my uh, config.ts. Now here's the thing that might be a little bit interesting to you here is that type, uh, Dino considers every file a module. And one of the sins that it's not trying to repeat with Dino you know, is the ambiguity that exists when you omit the suffixes of files. What does that mean in layman's terms? It means that when I import a file, 
actually have to include .ts to actually have the full your the full path of that file to actually have it work correctly. So here I'm going to replace this with this. Go name, run it again, and here we go. Hello, Harry. And let's just make sure that things are working. I'm going to make myself Larry, my alter evil twin. Hello, Larry. Cool. So this is Dino you know, working with TypeScript and modules. That's not that special. What did I put up next in our outline of things to do? Uh, oh, it has built-in utilities. This is really cool. Uh, Dino is trying to be a little bit more opinionated and inclusive about what it has built in. Um, Node definitely took the stance of, you know, third-party modules are the bread and butter. Dino is trying to actually have a better built-in experience, something that's more similar to Python, I would say, where you have your tools that you need all the time built in. You don't have to worry about installing 10 NPM packages to make things work. Uh, so in here, you actually have everyone help. I actually made this a little bit bigger. It's really big. Uh, so do you know, where, where am I? I? lost my point of reference. So do you know help? All these things, you know, you can go into the REPL if you want. You can evaluate help here. And here's all the subcommands. Now, what's really cool is that it actually has formatting built in. It's using Prettier under the hood. I have a video about Prettier if you want. But it's kind of taking a page out of the Go world where it actually has an opinionated uh, formatter built in so that all Dino files or TypeScript files look the same. So I can actually go into here uh, and then actually need to pass in a file. Index, format that file. Uh, what's also cool is it has this, um, what is it? Uh, where is it? Dependencies? What did I call it? Uh, it is info. Yes, info. So, uh, whoops, Dino help, and we have Dino.info, just info about cache or info related to source files, so and Dino info, uh, and then do Dino info index.js. So here I can see this is the local file that I'm running, my nice little file path, and here it actually has a mapping of all the dependencies. Right now it's one. But this is a tool that's just built into Dino for free. And probably one of the coolest, and there's all, a lot of other ones as well. I'm not going to dive into all of them because I'm not going to take up your time. You could do that yourself. The one that I find really, really cool is this bundle command. It essentially has a bundler built into Dino, which I'm sure leverages TypeScript under the hood. But what it means is that I can actually run Dino bundle index.ts and have... Uh, bundle.js, run that, and now I actually have this file, bundle.js, which is all of my module files built into one. So that if I wanted to, I can actually do dino bundle.js, oops, index.js, and Hello Larry works as expected. So deploying these things can become easy because it's built into Dino itself. So that's a really cool thing. I'm not sure if they're planning on building a tool that lets you wrap the Dino runtime with the source file, so it's like an all-inclusive one, but uh, that shouldn't be that hard to do. It'd be very cool. Uh, now, this is one of the most controversial parts of Dino, but one that I actually really dig. Uh, one of the sins that Ryan Dahl found about Node and NPM in particular is the... Um, way it handles dependencies. And that's always a hard thing to get right. And this also is taking, I think, a page out of the Go ecosystem. But the summary is that Dino does not use NPM or package.json. Doesn't use it. Uh, what does it use instead? It uses just regular old URLs. So you can actually import modules from the internet anywhere you want. Uh, hopefully you know what the contents are there. I mean, to say that it's insecure is to say that NPM is insecure because you're fetching just random files off the internet anyway, so why does it matter if it's behind just this registry, all this boilerplate on top of it, or just making an HTTP call, which is what Dino is doing. And what's cool is that the remote code is fetched and cached on the first cache on the first execution so that if you want to fly in a plane, you can actually pull all these dependencies down and things will just work. So what I want to do is actually I want to read this outline file in this file. Uh, so we're actually going to, so that's the goal I want to have for now. I'm going to show you how to do this both with the raw Dino API, then also using a third party dependency and um, how that looks when you actually import it. So this is the website for Dino, very bare bones, which is lovely. Uh, installing Dino is as simple as brew install Dino. I have a little example here of how you install from a third party uh, dependency, 
where it's just the URL, and this is actually making an HTTP server. But for now, what I want to do is look at the API reference for Dino. And this is essentially everything that Dino has. Uh, and if I scroll down to here, these are all the functions that are exposed. So whereas with Node, you have to kind of require all of the uh, built-in modules of Node, with Dino, all you have to do is worry about the uh, Dino object, which has all of these things built in. So the, one, so the one that we're going to use today is read file. Also what's good is because this is now built in modern times with promises being a thing that everyone can use, uh, all the APIs in Dino are return promises by default. So you can await your heart's content. So this is the boilerplate code that I need to use if I want to actually read a file into memory and use it. So I'm actually going to copy and paste this because I am lazy. Uh, what's also interesting about Dino when I was playing around here is it definitely goes out of its way to expose you to all the primitives that are that build up the code that you would normally run. I think Node has a bit of like a weird abstraction layer where things just make where things are just easier, but also a little bit less obvious what's going on. But this text decoder is actually an object in the browser. Uh, that's actually another fun, uh, feature of uh, Dino. Where does it say it? It says. Uh, the goals browser uh, browser compatible the subset of Dino programs which are written completely in JavaScript and do not use the global Dino namespace ought to be able to run in a modern web browser without change such that if you create a regular old Dino file you don't use the Dino namespace all these built-in Dino functions it should also work in the browser hence why this text decoder which is a built-in browser feature works in Dino itself so I'm going to copy and paste this. This is, I'm saying a text of UTF-8. I'm going to read the file, the outline file. So outline.md. And then it should just console log it. So let me save that. Open this back up. Dino.index.ts. Now here's where things get interesting. And this is what I wanted to show you. Uh, Uncop permission denied. Read access is not allowed. Run again with this flag, allow read flag. What does that mean? So that's actually to my next point, which I'm also clever about planning out. Uh, Dino is secure by default. By default, when you run Dino, it has no access to the file system, to the network, or environment access, uh, which means that if you try to run a file off the internet that's trying to delete your entire hard drive, it won't be able to unless you explicitly give Dino access to access the file system. And that's what it means by secure by default, a secure runtime. Node by default has access to all the things, which is scary. Dino says, no, you tell me what you want to give me access to. Uh, where does it say the secure by default um, allow do, 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 whatever. There's a bunch of them. I'm not really sure what they all are, but now, if I want to actually read the file system, I can go back here and do dash dash allow read. And here we have me outputting the outline file. So now I've actually given read access. Now, the thing that's not great is that I have to do all this magical incantation to read a file, which is boilerplate. And I'm sure you're like, hey, let's refactor that into a function. And I'm right there with you, but so is the Dino team. Uh, so they actually have, I'm not sure how much I enjoy their website because it's a little bit low tech, which means that it's a little bit difficult to kind of understand what's going on. Um, but you can go to the standard modules, which essentially is a wrapper around GitHub. And these are all the modules that are officially supported by Dino. So they're not built into Dino, but you can, they're officially maintained by Dino. And it's similar to the node built-in modules that they have. So in my case, I'm going to go to FS. And I know about this one module called read file string. So this is the source code, so I can read it. And here I see read file string, which is being exported. And if you look down here, this is essentially the code that I copied and pasted. So this is exactly what I want to do. So the way that you import this is you copy the URL, because again, they did this on purpose, make it easy. And I can go into here and I can say import, what's the name of this? Read file string, the named export from I'm going to say this file and then save that. And then here, 
I'm going to comment this out. I'm going to say console log await read file string outline.md. So let's watch what happens when we run this. So it's still working as expected. Same thing working, but if you scroll to the top here, what you'll note is it's compiling the index file as it normally does, and then it's downloading that third party dependency. So that it, and that's what I was saying before, is that on the first time that it needs to, it'll read that file and cache it locally. Such that if I run this again, it doesn't have to go out and fetch that again. Also, it didn't have to recompile it because it knew that nothing had changed, which is really cool. We save that compile it and change. So it'll know if the file's changed or not to not have to worry about things. Um, and that's cool. Uh, let's, what they also encourage with Dino is to actually uh, version your modules. So here you can actually say, uh, I'm using Dino version 0 0.32.0. So I'm gonna save that. So that means that if I'm stuck on a version, uh, I can actually just fix that version to not worry about there being any breaking changes between versions. That is Dino in a nutshell, a kind of better version of Node, or at least it's taking a lot of the learnings from Node and then applying it to a clean slate. So it's not really fair to say that because Node is stuck in its history. You just can't re, you can't fundamentally change things without making a whole new thing, which is what Dino is. Uh, in terms of I mean, if you wanted to write a simple script locally and you wanted to use TypeScript, Dino is a great option for that. The amount of time it'll take you, I think, to get up and running writing just a, a basic utility script locally is going to be 100 times easier than Node. Node is not really built for that. It's just JavaScript on the back end, which has warts on all that. Dino is kind of made to be more pleasant to write these things, both from compiling, bundling. So, so for example, when you bundle, let's actually bundle for a second. If I do Dino bundle index.js to bundle.js index.ts uh, I believe it's going to actually include the third party dependency that I used uh, is that true uh, do, 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 do. yeah look at that it pulled it in so you can actually deploy this to like some server and not have to worry about any requests to a third party service to actually have things work so writing little scripts becomes even more pleasant with Dino. Uh, they're trying to get to version one. They're not there yet. That is their stated goal for 2020. And I'm seeing big things in the future for Dino. It just makes things a lot more pleasant uh, to just write JavaScript on the server side. Very, very exciting. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you're psyched about Dino. Uh, if you're not already a subscriber, become a subscriber down below. If you are also a fan of my face, you can follow me on Twitter, on my newsletter, or Patreon. All those things, links in the description as always. And I will see you, see you again next week with a brand new video from me, Harry Wolf, to your face as well. Till then, I'll see you.